Hi everybody, by popular request I'm going to show you how to have processing respond to multiple key presses simultaneously. Uh, we'll be modifying a program which does not do that, um, and before we do that I want you to understand why the program as written doesn't respond to multiple key presses. So here I've got in my draw method the if key pressed, and then I'm checking the key variable to see which key is being pressed down. So here's the thing, if you press two keys down at the same time, it, of course it's not really at the same time, one of them is going to be pressed a slight amount of time before the second one, and the key variable only contains the single key value that you pressed most recently. So that's why you can't respond to multiple key presses, is because key can only have one value at a time. Um, and if you're curious what that value is, um, I mean other than doing something like this, you could actually display what it is, like this. So now if I run it, here if I hit A, oh I guess my console is not displaying, okay never mind, uh, okay here we go. So I hit A and it moves, and notice that um, A is still getting displayed because even though I'm not uh, holding down a key right now, the key variable still contains the value of the key that I most recently pressed. So there's A, there's uh, there's D, there's A. Here I'm going to press W and D at the same time, and it looks like W uh, was the most recent one I pressed. Okay, so how are we going to modify this so that uh, the computer will know if I am holding two keys down at the same time? Um, the solution is in the use of two separate methods. So here I am after draw, I'm going to create public void key pressed and then another method called public void key released. Take note, you have to spell uh, released and pressed exactly correctly with the capitals, otherwise they won't work because these are built-in methods um, that run automatically at particular times. So key pressed runs whenever you press a key. Um, and so if I press two keys at once, um, of course, they, the keys are going to get pressed at slightly different times. So the key pressed method will actually run twice, one time for each time the key gets any key gets pressed down. Key released, uh, similarly, runs whenever a key gets released. So here's the idea of what I'm going to do. I'm going to create some Boolean variables up here um, for, for up, down, left, and right. Boolean variables can hold true or false. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have these Boolean variables represent whether or not each of these keys is getting pressed down at any particular time. So if up contains true, that will mean that the user is pressing the W key. If down is true, that will mean that the user is pressing the S key. So what I'm going to do here is instead of saying if key pressed and then instead, instead of saying if key equals A, I'm going to say if right equals true. Um, and remember, right is going to be a variable that should be true only when the user is pressing the right key. Oh, uh, sorry, that should be left because it's the A key. That makes sense. So here, this should be right equals true. So the W key is going to be up. And then this is going to be down. <coughs> Okay, so this whole system is only going to work assuming I can actually make these variables be true and false at the right times corresponding to when I'm actually holding keys down. So in key pressed, I'll say if key equals the A key, uh, that corresponds to left, so I'm going to set left to be true. If the key that just got pressed down is the D key, then I'll set right to be true. If the key that just got pressed down is the W key, then I'll set up to be true. And if the key that just got pressed down is S, then I'll set down to be true. So whenever I press a key, if it's one of these four keys, I'll set the corresponding variable to record the fact that that key has been pressed down. All right, when I release a key, I'm going to do the same thing but in reverse. I'm going to check which was the key that got released. And depending on what key it was, I'll set the corresponding variable to be false. So now let's imagine what happens. Let's say I hit W and D almost at the same time. Key pressed, once, uh, key pressed w runs twice. Once for the W key, which will set this to true, 
and then right afterwards for the D key, which will set this to true. Okay, but notice that even though the key variable has changed, um, because I'm using different variables uh, to keep track of which keys are being pressed down, now all of a sudden it's possible that both right and up could be true at the same time because I'm using two different variables, whereas key couldn't have two different values at the same time, and that's why it didn't work before. Um, and then when I let go of W and D, both of them get set to false and it should stop moving. Okay, so let's test it and see if it works. So here's just D, there's just A, here's W and D, and it's going diagonally. Um, so I should note that you should decide what how you want to handle the case of like A and D getting pressed down simultaneously. There I just hit A and D at the same time and it's not doing anything, which maybe is what you want, uh, but maybe not. So you'd have to you'd have to decide about that. But now I can really make my circle run around in all kinds of fun ways. Okay, I hope this has helped. Good luck with your games.